Hello everyone, I'm Adam Brown and this is Shell Point Today for the weekend of October 31st, November 1st, and 2nd. On today's show, one of the keys to health is drinking plenty of water. And now, folks at the assisted living facilities have a new tool to do just that. But first, the annual Holiday Bazaar takes place Friday and Saturday at the Woodlands. Get a jump start on all of your holiday shopping with great items handmade by your friends and neighbors here at Shell Point. Last year, more than 2,500 people attended the bazaar, so make sure you head over to the Woodlands Commons early for the best selection. The Holiday Bazaar runs Friday and Saturday from 10 o'clock until 3 o'clock. On Monday, Session 4 of the six-part Academy series, Russia Under the Czars, takes place with presenter Seth Mendel of Teladora. In Session 4, you'll hear about Alexander I, Napoleon, and Nicholas I as they all fought for power across Asia and Europe. Monday's class will begin at 1.15 in the Social Center on the island with sign-ups required. Also on Monday, learn more about what's going on inside of your body, including your brain, in the fascinating Academy class, Biofeedback. Dr. Nancy Spencer, clinical psychologist at Shell Point Behavioral Health, will present the class which gets underway at 10 o'clock on Monday in the Grand Cypress Room at the Woodlands. Hydration, one of, if not the most important part of a healthy lifestyle. But for some, staying hydrated may not be so easy. That's why a new tool at the assisted living facilities here at Shell Point is playing a big role in keeping the water flowing. Here's Inga Bredahl with more. We are here with two of King's Crown residents, Jean Field and Mary Sue Thrasher. They are right now at our new water hydration stations. As you can see, Jean is filling up with some delicious citrus flavored water. Both Mary Sue and Jean come here every day and get their glasses full of water. Mary Sue and Jean, tell us why you feel it's important that you are drinking water every day. It's wonderful to have these because we have them with us all the time. Even at night, if you want a sip of water, it's on your walker right beside your bed. It's marvelous and it makes you feel good. Mary Sue, how about you? Well, plus what Jean has just said, uh, I've never been a water drinker, really. I've always needed to drink more water. This has gotten me really going because I just keep it filled. And uh, uh, when I go walking, I have it with me and I drink some. So I've increased my water intake a great deal. So as you can see, having these hydration stations is really important. And so we have these at all three of our buildings in assisted living, both at King's Crown, at the Springs, and at the Arbor. And from what I've heard from the other residents is people are feeling better. And look at the beautiful rosy cheeks on these ladies. You can tell it's bringing out the beauty in their skin. And not only is it nice for that, but it also makes you feel good in general. So we're very glad that you are utilizing it. And uh, next we're gonna speak with Jean Wilson Wright, who happens to be the nurse here at King's Crown. And she is going to explain maybe some of the little medical terms as to why staying hydrated is important. Jean, what was one of the reasons why we got these hydration stations? We got the hydration station because our nurse practitioner, Kim Hogan, noticed that a number of our residents were experiencing dehydration. And dehydration in older adults is fairly common as we age between the ages of 20 and 80. Most adults lose 15% of the water within their bodies, which comes to about six liters. And when you lose that much as an older person, you don't have a lot of leeway. Losing a little bit more will send you over the edge. So we put in the water stations and made them very attractive with the fruit to have encourage people to drink more water. And what have you found since we've put these in at all three buildings? What have you found with the residents? Um, do you find that they're utilizing these? Um, that there are less falls, what have you noticed? We have noticed an increase in drinking of water within our facilities, which is a very good thing. Uh, most adults don't like to drink water and having it handy helps. There has been a correlation with improved health because our bodies use water in every single aspect of the running of our bodies and it doesn't take a lot for you to become dehydrated. So having it so available has certainly been a big help. 
I know people always say, oh, it's so important that when the weather is hot that we stay hydrated, but really it's important all the time. All the is that time. correct? We lose water through sweating. The simple act of breathing, exhalation, you lose two and a half liters of water that way a day wow. just from breathing. And so it is really important even when the temperatures are starting to cool like they are now to keep your water consumption up. It's not just for the hot, hot weather. One of the top 10 reasons older adults are admitted into the hospital is for dehydration. And we have seen a decrease with dehydration admissions to our local hospitals since the putting in our water stations. So drink up that water, all of you, and stay hydrated throughout the year. Coming up, we're going to replay some of the best stories from earlier this week on Shell Point Today. But before we do that, let's cover all of this weekend's happenings, academy news, menus, and church news. Welcome to the weekend edition of Shell Point TV's Happening segment. I'm Bev Chandley here with Jill Aldrin. We're going to go over the activities for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We're going to start out at 8 o'clock Friday morning with the men's match play doubles tennis at the tennis courts. 8.15, we have the stamp ministry. They always need volunteers, so head on down to help them out. They'll be in the stamp room down in the tunnel. At 8.30 until 11.30, we have the marketplace going on in an administration courtyard. 10 o'clock is the time for men's match play doubles tennis at the Woodlands Tennis Courts. We have the Shell Point Holiday Bazaar at the Woodlands Common from 10 until 3. Do not miss that. That's a great sale. 10.15, we have the Inquiring Minds in the Manatee Room. We're going to jump to the afternoon activities with Advanced Table Tennis in the Tarpon Room at 1.15. Also at 1.15, we have Technical Questions and Answers with Brian Ganey. That'll be in the Social Center on the island. At 1.15, the Quilters will be in the Osprey Room. And the model train room will be open from 1.30 until 3.30. 1.30, we also have Vespers in the community room of the Arbor. Bid Euchre will be played in the Sable Room at 2 o'clock. At 2.15, we have Water Volleyball at the LifeQuest Aquatic Center. It's time for Latin Size down in the Health Club. That's at 2.30. We also have a 2.30 Vespers at the community room of King's Crown. Our last Vespers of the day is at 3.30, and that will be held at the Springs. At 6.45, we have our last activity of the night. It's game night at the Resident Activity Center. Head on down for some good, clean fun. Now here's Jill. She's going to tell you about Saturday's lineup. Thanks. We start our Saturday morning at 8 o'clock with pickleball. It's played at the pickleball courts on the island. Also at 8 o'clock, round robin doubles tennis at the tennis courts. Our final 8 o'clock activity is the Shell Point Walking Club. They're going to be meeting at the island clock in the administration area, and they're heading out to Caritian State Park for this month's walk. At 9.30, men's doubles will be meeting at the tennis courts. Also at 9.30, the women's doubles will be meeting as well. At 9.45, duplicate bridge. They meet in the manatee room on the island. And there's a golf clinic at the Shell Point Golf Club at 10 o'clock. Also starting at 10 o'clock and running until 3 is the second day of the Shell Point Holiday Bazaar. Head on down to the woodlands in the commons area and all around for some great, great things. 1015 Model Yacht Sailing Club. They'll be sailing their boats in the Garden Apartments Pond on the island. And chess in the Library Lounge at 1 o'clock. Scrabble at 115 in the library lounge. And our final 115 is table tennis downstairs in the tarpon room on the island. At 315, head over to the health club for basic line dancing. And our final Saturday event is duplicate bridge. They meet in the manatee room at 630. Here's Bev for what's happening on Sunday. Thank you, Jill. At 9 o'clock, we have Christian Life Studies in the Game Room of the Woodlands and Christian Life Studies at the Village Church. 10.15 is the time for our morning worship service at the Village Church, and it's also broadcast live on Shell Point TV, Channel 13. 
Then we're going to jump all the way to the afternoon for 315 ballroom line dancing for beginners. That'll be down in the health club on the island. And then our last event today is 615. We have our evening service at the Village Church. Well, we wish you a very wonderful weekend, and we will see you back here next week. Hi, I'm Terry Koleth with your Academy information for Friday and the weekend. On Friday, October 31st at 9.15, Adobe Photoshop will take place in the Computer Teaching Center on the island. At 10 o'clock, smartphones on the iPhone will continue in the Sabre Room at the Woodlands. I'd like to tell you about some new classes coming next week. On Monday, we have a biofeedback class with Dr. Nancy Spencer, Shell Point Behavioral Health Department Clinical Psychologist. We have Talking as a New Typing, a dictation class with Bruce Findlay of Sundial. And Russia Under the Tsar is our fourth program in the series with Seth Mendel of Teledora. This time the focus is on Alexander I, Napoleon, and Nicholas I. On Tuesday, we begin a brand new art class series, Russian Folk Art with Pat Smelkoff. And we also have Java, Sumatra, and Bali with Professor Adrian Kerr. Then printing from your tablet with our Apple technology instructors, Penny Modrich of Nautilus and Bruce Findlay of Sundial. On Wednesday, the third session of our intermediate bridge classes begins with Susan Willoughby. And Richard Nelson of Lakewood brings us another Computer College Prep School series. This time his focus is word processing. On Thursday, we begin a look at Life at Sea with three separate classes taught by Robert Maycomber. The first class is Sailor Talk, the language of the sea and how it came ashore. On Friday, Robert Maycomber's class, Life at Sea, will focus on music of the sea, sea shanties, and their influence. Menus for your weekend. In the Crystal Room, the Crystal Platter on Friday is Chef's Choice. The dinner special is the Seafood Buffet for $15.95, and the soup of the day is Manhattan Clam Chowder. In the Island Cafe for lunch, the special on Friday is a Mushroom Swiss Burger with Onion Rings for $7.25. The dinner special is Chef's Choice for $8.25. Dinner specials in the Palm Grill on Friday are Lamb Chops for $22.95, or Shrimp Portofino for $13.95. On Saturday, the Crystal Room is closed. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Saturday, the special is a Sloppy Joe with fries for $7.25. The dinner special is grilled beef liver with mashed potatoes and green beans for $8.25. The dinner special in the Palm Grill on Saturday is prime rib for $19.95. On Sunday, the Crystal Room features its Sunday brunch for $17.50. In the Island Cafe for lunch on Sunday, the special is a bacon, egg, and cheese English muffin with fresh fruit for $7.25. The dinner special is Chef's Choice for $8.25, and the Palm Grill is closed on Sundays. All menus are available 24 hours a day at www.shellpoint.net. Hi, welcome to Village Church Connections. I'm Andy Hawkins, a senior pastor of the Village Church, and I'm here with Mary and Davey, and we're here to talk about uh, this coming weekend's worship services. Right. And so, Mary and uh, you've been worshiping here at the Village Church for quite some time. We always look forward to Sunday, don't we? We do. And uh, take a wild guess. What have we been uh, studying in the scriptures mostly in the last uh, number of months? Well, we've done a lot of different things, but Hebrews yeah. in the morning, that's, so that's, that's been right. really interesting. That's right. We're going to continue that this week, and uh, we've been studying the book of Hebrews, which is about uh, the superiority of Christ, and uh, we finally got to that place where in the middle of the book of Hebrews, the author uh, introduces us to a strange Old Testament character by the name of Melchizedek. Last week, we uh, talked a lot about Melchizedek, but of course, the, the author wants to use that to teach us something about Jesus. And we're at that place in the story where he wants to teach us about the fact that our priest, who is Christ, is a forever priest. He, in fact, is a permanent priest. And that means a lot to us because, of course, the, the old covenant priests were, uh, were temporary in a certain sense. Mm -hmm. You know, they came, and they, uh, they came and did their thing for a period of time, and then they passed from the scenes, and all the things that they did had to be repeated. And that's what the author wants us to understand. But Jesus is not that way. He's a, he's a permanent priest. So that's what we're going to be looking at uh, this week in, uh, in the book of Hebrews. I'm coming. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I appreciate that. Now, in the evening, we have a really special opportunity uh, that uh, relates to things that uh, you're involved in with the women's ministries here at the Village Church. And uh, I'm looking forward to this 
this. Every year we have one of these occasions that's a special service, so tell us a little bit about that. Thank you, Andy. First of all, we thank you that we can have a Sunday evening to do this. That's special. Uh, this year, it is a really interesting program, again, because it's on storytelling. Everybody has a story. And many cultures have used the storytelling method to tell their own history. So Women's Ministry Global Outreach has a, a taking part of a national project where we will be supporting people who are helping others internationally to tell stories, actually God's stories. These stories are going to be retold for generations, and they're going to be told according to the culture and language uh, that they'll be received. So uh, it's different than just taking a Bible and reading a story. In fact, uh, they won't be using Bibles. Uh, this will all be done by memory. And one of the interesting things is that this is way bigger than one particular denomination. It's being used uh, just really widely across the world. And an exciting thing about Sunday night is we'll be having two of those stories. And they are actual stories from the trainee classes overseas. Wow. So when I got those, I thought, this is, this is really exciting. So Shell Point people are going to be telling those stories, but it'll be a narrative style. Mm -hmm. So when we come Sunday night, really listen for that change and difference. Uh, they, it, it just it flows like a story. And part of that is that all of us uh, have trouble memorizing lists. And this is very true with people who do international storytelling. They find that their people do better with a story. Uh, for instance, like the seven days of creation. That's really difficult for them and for me mm -hmm. to tell you today what is in those stories. But instead, um, they just do them as a narrative, and uh, it, it's very interesting to see. Yeah, and I'm sure very, very effective. <laughs> it's the kind of thing that uh, struck me from time to time. I, I love theology, and I love to think conceptually. But, uh, you know, interestingly, most of the Bible is a story. Right. And there must be a reason why God intended that his word would be driven by a story, because we can really hang our hats on it. We can uh, get a sense about the meaning and purpose of, of lives lived for the glory of God. And so uh, it's an exciting thing to see a service that's devoted to that kind of an approach. That uh, So I'm really looking forward to it. You're going to come in the morning, I'm going to come in the evening. <laughs> so morning and evening, this coming Sunday, November 2nd, 10-15 uh, in the morning, we'll be involved in Hebrews, and then the Alliance Women's National Project, wrote, rooted in storytelling, will be in the evening service at 6-15. We hope that you'll join us. We're looking forward to it. Blessings to all of you. Now we'll take a look back at some of the best stories from the past week. Dora Robbins from Resort Services stopped by to offer up some tips on pedestrian safety in our series Let's Talk Safety. Hi, my name is Dora Robbins from Resort Services and I serve on the Shell Point Safety Committee. In today's segment of Let's Talk Safety, we're going to address pedestrian safety. Florida law requires drivers to stop when a person is attempting to cross the street at a marked crosswalk. Many drivers are under the impression that yielding only means to slow down. This thought is completely wrong. Under Florida law, when a person is in the pedestrian crosswalk, drivers are required to stop and let the pedestrian cross safely. If there are no pedestrians in the crosswalk, you are not required to stop. If you are unsure whether or not a person intends to cross the road, you're better off slowing your vehicle until you can make a clear determination as to what the pedestrian's intention is. It's important to stay focused and alert for pedestrians. Anticipate difficulties of the elderly or young children. Take extra care at night for pedestrians who are crossing crosswalks in poorly lit locations. Always obey the speed limit. The speed limit is 15 miles per hour throughout Shell Point and five miles per hour in the parking garages and parking lots. Pay attention to congested areas like the center of the island around the medical center, guest house, and church. Use caution at the entrance of the woodlands, where not only pedestrians, but golf carts and bicyclists cross. It's important for pedestrians to obey traffic laws as well. Always use caution when crossing on crosswalks. Never assume the driver sees you. Always make eye contact with the driver to make sure he is aware you're there. 
Always use designated crosswalks. If possible, use sidewalks and walking paths. Use caution in parking lots and parking garages. If you're walking after dark, wear light colored or reflective clothing and shoes. You may also want to take a flashlight to make yourself more noticeable. And finally, be alert when approaching more dangerous areas such as construction zones. That's today's Let's Talk Safety. Thank you for watching and be safe. The new photo studio and gallery opens next week on the island. We got a sneak peek at all of the exciting equipment that will be available to you. Plus, Melody Desolay spoke with some of the folks at the studio about portraits, just one of the services being offered to you. Come on in. Let me show you around. This is the gallery. Now, for those of you who re might remember, this was the old dark room. Where we had sinks and everything here. The whole room was gutted. And this is now the gallery. Now, the gallery has a unique system where we put two shelves uh, and we never have to uh, hang a picture and then repair the holes and take the picture out. So this system really works very nice. And this is the opening show. The opening show are members of the board of directors. But we will have uh, different shows throughout the year. Hopefully, we're going to have some outside photographers come in and some of the shell point photographers will have show. I think the next show after this goes down about six weeks will be Lester Davison who's going to be showing uh, animals of Africa. And then we'll continue as, we, as the year goes on with outside and inside photographers. Well, this is the new part. This is the studio. And we have a manager for the gallery and we have a manager for the studio. And uh, I'll take you through this part first. Uh, we have uh, an Apple and we have a PC, a very good printer. Uh, this is really a salon printer. It does gorgeous, up to 12 by 19. And we're getting another printer here, and, uh, which will be wireless. And so eventually, we'll be able to have uh, teach printing and we'll have people come out here and make prints. Uh, we haven't figured out what they're going to cost yet, but we'll be feeding that in. We're also going to be teaching uh, uh, editing on these two formats, the uh, Mac and the PC. And so we'll be teaching editing. And uh, over here in this blank wall, you think it's blank, but it's not. We're getting a light screen TV. And, and uh, the purpose of that is not to sit and watch television, of course. It's that when we teach editing or uh, when we teach lighting, portrait lighting, which is one of the classes we're going to have, it could be projected on the screen. So nobody has to stand behind the camera and look at a little glass. They'll be able to see it all in, in large screen. Uh, the room is kept as flexible as we can to accommodate a lot of things. So over here is like a little library and, and uh, different members are starting to bring books. As you can see, we're not filled up yet, but uh, eventually we hope to. And up here, we're first starting, we're asking for people who have interesting items. And we're going to load the top there with all kinds of interesting items, because one of the classes, one of the things we're going to teach is uh, still life photography. And that's what this table is. This is a professional still life table. And what's unique about this table, first of all, it's very light. I can pick it up in one hand and roll it. Uh, it has the ability to uh, go down change angles, but it could also be lit from below. So you get some very interesting effects. And uh, you can drape all kind of uh, backdrops over it, so you can shoot on top of it. And still life photography, in my opinion, is probably one of the most creative forms of photography. Because when you walk around with your camera and you see something, so you get a nice angle, you have some good light, that's terrific. Here, you've got nothing, it's blank. You've got to come up with the items. You've got to come up with the lighting and how you're going to position everything. So still life, I think, is really one of the most creative forms of photography. And we'll be teaching that uh, also. And then come around here. And uh, you can see some of our different kind of lights and backdrops. We, we have um, two cloth backdrops. And we have three paper backdrops. And it's really easy. It just uh, comes right down. And you can change the backdrops. Uh, I hope someday in the near future to get a, um, a big scenic backdrop of Florida and put it on the back wall 
So when we take pictures uh, with people and they bring the grandchildren down, they can look as if they're in Florida. We'll get a beach scene, you know, and that'll be pretty cool. I'll get a fan and blow, blow the hair and it'll, it'll be kind of fun. Uh, we have a couple of soft boxes. Soft boxes I use for portrait work because they give a very even light. Here we have a pegboard with uh, tools. Like I said, everything was made very flexible. So that this chair can come out or it can be set up with those table and chairs over there, make it like a little uh, cafe. Or this is a posing stool, that could come in and be put here. Or we could take one of these uh, black and white chairs and put that here. So this set is, is very flexible and constantly can be changed very easily with very little effort. And we're still in the process of acquiring new equipment and uh, the, the studio right now owns two cameras that were donated, two very good um, digital cameras. So you can, don't even have to have a camera, you can come out here and learn and uh, we'll supply you with a camera. And that's about the whole story. So join the photo club and come on down. Hi Shell Point, I'm Melody Desolet and we are in the newly finished photo studio here in the Creative Arts Tunnel on the island. I'm joined today by Photo Club President Herb Sklar of Eagles Preserve and Therese Van Grosbeck of Lucina. She is our studio manager and we're here today to talk about a very exciting endeavor put on by the Photo Club. Thank you both so much for joining me here You're today. Now, Herb, tell me what we're going to be doing. I understand we're going to offer portraits to our residents? Correct. We are. Uh, the way it works, it's a 20 minute to a half hour photo session, and all the pictures that we take will probably be around 100 or 150, will be put on a CD or a DVD, and you take it anywhere you want and get it processed and make prints, and you will get a contact sheet with it contact sheet is a sampling of about 16 pictures of what's on there. Okay, so the photo club has never offered this before, so this is very exciting for our residents. These are excellent quality portraits that are done where? Right here in the studio? Right in the studio. Uh, they're salon prints. They, they're as professional as you can get if you went to any uh, photo studio. Um, and if you could see over there, uh, we have one of our backdrops up, but we also have uh, three or four others and we keep getting new ones, so we have a choice of backgrounds. So, of course, this is open to Shell Point residents. Who can accompany these residents? It's open for Shell Point residents and their family, so if you have grandchildren visiting or children visiting, take them down to the studio and get a family portrait. And if you have a well-behaved Animal will also put that in the picture too. They could be part of it. So Herb, am I correct in understanding that this is open to a family of five or six? Correct. Okay, and you had mentioned well-behaved dogs. Let's just make mention that they probably should be on a leash and be under 20 pounds. Yes. And of course, well-behaved does help, but I know our residents love their little animals, so that would make a great portrait. Part of the family. These photos can be used for Christmas cards, holiday greetings, or just a big picture in your living room, right? Yes, and it's, we're getting a little late to start, but for next year I hope to build a Christmas set and we can have special sessions just for Christmas photos. And now we're going to talk with the trees, of course, how much it costs, how to make an appointment, and what photographers are participating. The residents need to call the photo studio at 433-7900 and leave a message and I will get the message and call them back to make an appointment. Um, I will check to see what photo photographers are available uh, when they would like to come in and they need to come with $25, a check or cash, when they come to the appointment. So you had mentioned they could pay in cash, $25, or with check, and what would they make the check out to? The Shell Point Photo Club. Okay, and in the memo? They can put portraits. So, Therese, once their session is over and they're happy with their results, how would they go about picking up the disc that Herb described and also the contact sheet? They will pick up, they will be able to pick up their pictures in four or five days at the Rack Center service desk 
and they need to sign for them at that time and then they will get the disc and the contact sheet. Now Herb, I have my own little family and just going to a commercial studio and paying by the print, it can be astronomical in price. Mm -hmm. So I cannot believe that you're allowing residents to obtain the disc with all the rights to make their own prints and even send it out for even professional printing. Absolutely, they can make their own prints or they can send them out. So Herb, when residents pay this $25, what does that money go toward? It goes towards buying new and updated equipment and replenishing consumables like ink and paper. So it goes right back into the studio, which of course is for residents to use and enjoy in classes for, and things. Can I give you for instance what would he like to do in the future? I'd like to get a backdrop of a uh, beach scene with the water behind it and so when people come here to get their pictures taken, it'll look as, just as if they're on the beach. Well, can you imagine coming from up north and being in front of a beach scene and just enjoying a nice family portrait together? Absolutely. Well, Shell Point, you have just heard all about portraits that are now available to you beginning November. And all you have to do to set up an appointment for you, your friends, or your family, or your well-behaved pet is call the Photo Studio at 433 7900 and Therese will be available to make an appointment with you with one of our wonderful photographers. The cost is only $25 made out to the Shell Point Photo Club or you can pay cash for it and in return you will receive a disc of all your pictures taken within the session and also a contact sheet. This is just in time for the holidays. You can't beat a beautiful portrait so be sure to make your reservation today. Thank you so much for joining us. The 11th annual Shell Point Charity Golf Tournament is just two weeks away. Legacy Foundation Executive Director Tim Stevenson is outside on the range getting ready. Oh, I'd take that. Oh, hi there. David and Jason and I are out getting ready for our last practice round before the Shell Point Open Golf Tournament scheduled for Friday, uh, the 14th of November. And let me tell you, yeah, I've been watching these guys and they can really use the practice. Hey, we heard that. What do you mean extra practice? We played as well last year as the great Phil Mickelson. See? Just like Phil Mickelson, we're stars in this course. And this year we're shooting for some of those big prizes, like a two-year lease on a brand new Lexus or an Acura. So, now be honest with me guys, do you really think that you're gonna play well enough on Friday to win a car? It seems, when I think back to last year, it was a little more like Phil's difficult days. Think about it guys, maybe you need to think about some of the other prizes. Maybe even just be happy to get a discount on a massage at the Island Salon. You know, but really it's a lot more than just great prizes. This is our opportunity to do good for the community and to do something for the memory care unit at the Larson Pavilion. Absolutely. Of, of course, Tim, we, we are really looking forward to the golf tournament on Friday, November 14th, and it, that we'll be supporting the Memory Care Center. 
and between the breakfast that they're going to serve at 7.30 in the morning and the wonderful lunch afterward, we'll be ready to tee off for an awesome round of golf at 8 o'clock in the morning. It'll be a great day. And we'll feel like we can conquer Augusta. You'll want to get prepared for the tournament and getting your short game ready is one of the keys. Well, here with a tip on pitch and run chip shots is Shell Point Golf Course Manager Gary Keating. My name's Gary Keating. Welcome to Shell Point Golf. We're going to hit some pitch and runs today. The club I've selected today is a 52 degree sandwich. We want the, go the golf ball to actually hit the green and roll out. We're not looking to get the ball in the air and fly it to the hole. What I'm always looking for when I'm playing golf, especially when I'm hitting a shot, is to get the ball on the green as quickly as possible and almost have the ball roll like a putt when it's finished. What we actually want is the ball to be slowing down at the hole. So distance control is very important. How I control my distance on this particular shot is dictated by my backswing. For an example, if I take my backswing this much, I can generate a certain amount of energy. If we go back this longer, we can generate more energy. Further back, even more so energy. So what we're actually looking to do is to contain the energy that we supply to the head of the club. Having said that, we want to make sure that two things happen when we hit this particular shot is number one is we don't decelerate onto the golf swing. If we decelerate, generally what happens is the club will hit the ground too fast and will basically come up short at the distance required. So I'm going to show you a deceleration and then we'll show you basically the correct one. So I'm going to walk you through the steps. We've got a golf ball, 52 degree wedge, and we'll set the wedge behind the golf ball, aiming the wedge face at where I want the golf ball to land. My stance is always a little bit left of the intended target. So once again, the butt of the club's always in the center of the belly. So I'm going to make a practice swing first, and during the practice swings, I'm trying to feel the distance that I need to hit it or the amount of energy I need to supply to produce the distance I need when we hit the golf shot. So I'm going to come back, we've got a flag, so nice and slow, and as you can see my back swing is very slow, and my follow through is always a little faster than the back swing. So we're going to do a little deceleration, hopefully you can see it on camera. So we're going to go back. And we come in, club hits the ground a little fast, blade gently leaves it open and we gently hit the ball to the right or we'll hit it thin and it'll run past the flag and off the green. So we're going to do a correct one right now and you'll see my backswing will be a lot slower than the follow through. So during my practice swings I try to obtain this feeling. So I might take two or three practice swings and you'll see the pros on TV do the same thing. So nice and slow and the follow through is a little faster. Nice and slow, follow through is a little faster. So let's put this into practice. Nice and slow, follow through is a little faster. And as you can see, we've got a successful golf shot. I hope this tip helps you and you can contact me at shellpointgolf.com or the phone number 433-9790. Identity theft, a fast-growing crime that has victimized hundreds of thousands of people, many who didn't even know about it until it was much too late. Find Mark Banks, Anna Smith has some tips to keep you from becoming a victim. Hello, I'm Anna Smith, Managing Executive at Find Mark National Bank and Trust on the island. In today's Find Mark Minute, we are discussing identity theft. With enough information, any person can use your identity to commit fraud or crimes. Here are some ways to protect yourself. Your credit and debit card numbers, PINs, and especially your social security number are sacred. Don't provide any of this information to someone calling, 
faxing or emailing you. Next, don't carry more identification or information than necessary in your purse or wallet. If it's stolen, you could be giving criminals all they need to steal your identity. Only keep your credit and debit cards and checks in your wallet. Keep your social security card at home. Another way to avoid identity theft is signing up for direct deposit. This prevents someone from stealing a check out of your mailbox and forging your signature to have access to your money. Speaking of stealing, your information can be stolen right from under your nose, from your own trash. Before tossing your financial documents, shred them so that information cannot be used. It is vital to be smart and stay on top of your statements and bills every month. Watch your statements for anything suspicious. Reviewing your credit report can show signs of fraud too. Finally, if your credit card bill doesn't arrive on time, it could mean someone has stolen your mail and account information. It never hurts to be skeptical and double check on something suspicious. And if you have questions, you can stop by or call us at the bank on the island, 461-5999. With today's Fine Mark Minute, I'm Anna Smith. The Village Church reopened this month after undergoing several months of renovations. And to kick off its reopening, Shell Point held the first concert of the season, Kaleidoscope, a celebration of the arts, just a couple of weeks ago. And if you weren't able to see this fantastic event in person, Mary Franklin and Randy Woods are here now with all the highlights. Hi, I'm Randy Woods, and I'm here today with Mary Franklin, and we are just so happy about the recent experience that we had at the Village Church sharing together the first program of the fall, the Kaleidoscope. It was a wonderful evening, and it was truly a community event. Don't you agree? It was. As we were planning, our desire was to have a celebration of the arts. Right. And uh, a celebration it was, not only with our residents, mm -hmm. some staff members, but some very special guest artists who came to give of their time and talent to entertain and inspire us. Right. It was fun. Now, Randy, you put up a great lineup together, and one of those was Rako was oh, here. Oh, sure. Rako, of course, is the concert master for the Southwest Florida Symphony, mm -hmm. and she's been here many times, and she is such a delight to work with and a fine musician. So she started the program with her violin, and then we continued in big contrast to a young man who is 13 years of age, Noah Waddell. Mm -hmm. And he's quite the pianist for a 13-year-old, quite the child prodigy. Now, he received a, a standing ovation by many, and that doesn't happen much here at Shell Point. No, it doesn't. So, it's very wonderful. You know, I had the opportunity of being backstage, and Reiko was sitting and watching through the curtains and watching Noah. She had a direct line, and I could see Reiko. And she was getting emotional watching him, and it was nice to see her respect the younger generation coming up in the music. So it was nice behind the scenes as well. Oh, it was. In that dynamic, we were able to see the professional mm -hmm. as well as the amateur, mm -hmm. and to see our staff and residents participate, some sharing poetry. Mm -hmm. Jean Hawkins and her singing yes. inspired us when she sang, um, You'll Never Walk Alone, right. as well as I Feel Pretty. Mm -hmm. And it was such a delightful time just in sharing together in the arts. Right. And then, of course, um, I appreciated the artistry of the silent movie. Oh, yes. Everyone was laughing at that. Well, that is so amusing to me. Of course, you should be laughing, but it's amazing to me how much laughter occurred over that 22 minutes mm -hmm. without a word spoken. Right. And I was listening in the back, and I almost would forget that those sounds, especially like when the, the policeman whistled his whistle, sure. it was coming from the organ, and it was just impeccable timing. Oh, yes. Stephen Britton, he's just a fine artist and very few can do that today. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a dying art. Right. But he revived and brought it to life, and it was so much fun. Right. Well, how about Carol Ashley? Carol and Ted Ashley the gracing the stage. The moment of the <laughs> evening, yes. Oh, I admire them, their rhythm, and just the gracefulness as they move about the stage, their love for each mm -hmm. other. I think it's just a beautiful inspiration of romance that they shared, and we enjoyed that very much. Very much, very yeah. much. Now, sitting backstage, I even experienced some of the upgrades back there of the church. One that I appreciated was there's now a TV in the yes. back. 
back of the church so we can see what's going on on the stage so we're not peeking around the corner or wondering if I'm up next. You really are able to time it out and also enjoy the performance sure. as well. And that's been part of the upgrades with uh, the refresh mm -hmm. and renew. Mm -hmm. Obviously the aesthetics of the new paint and carpet mm -hmm. and the decor, but technically with the lights being able to be dimmed now or blackened, mm -hmm. we couldn't do that before. And then, as you mentioned, the TV monitor backstage right. and in the narthex, in the lobby, right. we have a monitor that has the house TV. So oftentimes, it may be a person waiting backstage to mm -hmm. participate in a program. Now they can see what's going on. Right. Or if someone needs to leave the auditorium mm -hmm. to get a drink for whatever reason, they can be out in the lobby and still see what's going on and be a part of it without interrupting. Right. Randy, all of those upgrades are such a gift to the community. The church really has gifted that to the community, and it will shine in all of the programming that will take place. I know for still today, and especially the next day, people really saw the difference in the mm -hmm. quality of the sound and music. And so this is a true gift to the entire community. So we really thank the church for all of that. Well. I appreciate you saying that, and the church has been very wholeheartedly supportive of wanting to do this as a gift to the community, mm -hmm. to honor God and just celebrate in the community all that we are blessed to enjoy. And as we have begun, we look forward now to a season filled with lots of celebration. Right. And the residents can find out more because in the Shell Point Life, it really lays out everything that's happening for oh, the Oh, sure. Season. Our signature event is yes. in November. Mm -hmm. And then we got the Fine Arts concert, right. the Thanksgiving celebration, the Christmas celebration, season yes. of praise is starting. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a full season. Yes, it is. And I think the artists will be just as impressed as, as the residents as well. It's amazing to hear them backstage and knowing that they appreciate performing in such a wonderful venue. It's just, it's, it's a proud moment for me. It is for me as well. And thank you for your staff and just the joy that we have of working together, not only for the Kaleidoscope program, but the events that are coming. And we look forward to having all the residents coming out and being a part of each and every activity, because yeah. uh, we are blessed, and it's a joy to be able to share them together. I echo that thought too, Randy, and uh, hope you come out and see us at all of the programs at the Village Church this season. Well, that about does it for another exciting week of Shell Point today. We're glad you joined us for our show. Tune in again next week for more news and stories from around your community. Until then, this is Shell Point today for the weekend of October 31st, November 1st, and 2nd. I'm Adam Brown, and for all of us here at Shell Point TV, we hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday.